loves you and knows all that you do. He knows every thought that enters your head. But he knows what you're going to be doing on the new earth. That's a whole other uh, subject, but we're not going to just float around in heaven. There's a new earth that we're going to live on. And we'll have a purpose, and we'll have a reason, and we'll have a job, and we'll have things to do. And we'll live forever and ever and ever with the I am on the new earth. Hallelujah. You know, he was such a controversial figure. And he still is. You know, you can talk about God all you want to, but not Jesus. Islam believes that uh, he is a historical figure, but he was like Noah and Abraham and Moses and Muhammad. He was one of the prophets. They don't believe that he was the I am who spoke from the bush. Now the Jews certainly don't believe that. Even today, they don't recognize anything concerning Jesus as being the I am. But I think one of the most controversial claims he has is that you can't be saved. You can't live eternally. You can't know God unless you come through him. Because the thought today is that there are many paths to God. Doesn't that sound good? All religions are good. And if your heart is good, even though you are a Muslim or a Buddhist or a Hindu, and your heart is good, you're worshiping idols, and you're calling on Muhammad to help you, that's just one of many paths to God. But the truth is, church, there is only one path to the Father. And that's through Jesus Christ himself. And that's by experiencing him. Not just knowing him intellectually, but having an experience with the Christ. Who is this man? Timothy, in Timothy, chapter 2, verse 13, it says, While we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. Who is this man? He is our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then, Peter writes in 2 Peter 1.1, 1, 1, he said, this letter is from Simon Peter, a slave and apostle of Jesus Christ, and I'm writing to you who share the same precious faith that we have. This faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ, our God and our Savior. This man is our God and our Savior. Hallelujah. 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 And we can experience him. We can have a relationship with him. We were talking last night, and I was sharing about when I was in Vietnam, 19 and 20 years old, I uh, prayed one of those foxhole prayers, not once, but many, many times. <laughs> and I said, Lord, if you'll just get me home, I'll serve you. How many times did I pray that? So afraid. And I prayed, Lord, if you'll just get you. Well, as I prepared
ready to go home, I bought me two big old speakers and filled them with marijuana. <laughs> and I had 60 pounds of marijuana that I sent home. <laughs> and my goal for life was to stay stoned the rest of my life. But I am would not leave me alone. Praise God. Hallelujah. And he kept saying, I, I, when I tell the story, it seemed like he was right here. He kept saying, Chuck, you said you would serve me if I got you home. <laughs> and I would go about my business. And maybe a week, two weeks, a month later, Chuck, you said you would serve me if I got you home. He wouldn't leave me alone. And finally, in the Red Barn Trailer Park in Valdosta, Georgia, <laughs> on October 3rd, I fell down on my face and I said, God, if you're real, be real to me. <clears throat> and it was like tons of sins were just lifted off. And I cried and I cried and I cried. But I met the I am. Praise and I know who this man is. Yes. Amen. Yes. You know who this man is, don't you? Yes. And if you don't, you can know who this man is. Yes. Not intellectually, but you can have a relationship with this man. Yes. With this God who took upon himself flesh and walked among us. And then died for us. And was raised again from the dead. That's who he is. That's who he is. I want us to pray for our uh, family and our friends. I just want to share these, these verses with you here. Out of 1 Corinthians 3, 14 through 18. We must pray as the pastor was saying. We can't be sweet about it. We must really pray. And serious in our prayers for our family, for our friends, for those that God puts on our heart. Because they can't believe unless we pray for them. I'm not sure anybody's saved without praying. <coughs> Maybe someone has been. I know when I got saved, people were praying for me. And it's second Corinthians. Let's try 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 14, talking about people being able to believe. It says, But the people's minds were hardened, and to this day, whenever the old covenant is being read, that same veil covers their minds so they can't understand the truth. How many of you, before you were born again would read the Bible and just say, oh, this is so good. <laughs> this is so interesting. I know whenever I would read the Bible, I couldn't understand it. It was boring. I didn't want to read it. And then he goes on to say, Yes, even today when they read Moses' writing, their hearts are covered with that veil and they do not understand. But when someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. The point is, let us pray for our family. Let us pray for our friends. Let us not be surprised when they don't believe because there's a veil over their mind. And 
then the next chapter, in verse 3, Paul writes, If the good news we preach is hidden behind a veil, it is hidden only from the people who are perishing. Satan, who is the god of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They're unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. So we want to pray for them. We want to do battle for them. We want to come against Satan and the demons that bail them and cause them to be blinded to the truth. Let us pray for them that they might know who this man is. they might experience him like you have experienced. If there's anyone here today who has not experienced him, we want to talk with you and we want to pray with you. Because we want you to know who this man is.